Hi everyone, it's Christina here um, from Simply Inspired. I'm going to be introducing Tim Burgess today. He's an artist who is an impressionist. He does impressionist work and he also does mural work, which is very, very fantastic. So he's a muralist as well. So we don't get too involved in. We have some of our street artists that you've seen before, but he actually paints walls, people, and also does a lot of impressionist work. The work is based around feelings, predominantly the human condition. And we'll be talking um, quite a bit about that today. So so hi Tim, nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Um, right, I've got now with you, you, you've got great paintings. I was having a look through them and they're fantastic. And I almost like some of the, uh, some people will say the dichotomy of the one in the background there, where you've got, you know, the, the lady and the man and then you can just see their heads and you've got the blue and the black and the combination is fantastic. Blue and not higher, it's on my easels. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> And, and you, they're quite expressive paintings of feelings and, and ideas and everything else. And I, I was quite sort of taken by that. And I particularly um, was looking at Alone in the Crowd and Bared in Your Soul pictures that I was, you know, um, I was quite involved in those pictures. I, quite, I personally quite like those and I'm sure people have their different ideas. Tell me a little bit about your paintings and how you got into getting involved with the human condition, the expressions that we're seeing behind us and how you um, tell about your paintings. Well, it, was a, uh, it all started, um, I would say, it was in a pub uh, licensing game and how I took up art more, say, professionally, at a professional level um, and taking it more serious at this time. I mean, beforehand, it was a hobby thing. I just draw on a lot. Um, I just found it enjoyable. Um, I was uh, in a pub. I suffered with, um, I had nervous exhaustion and burnt out basically, um, where and then I hit a state of depression uh, during that time. And then from there, <laughs> I obviously I was just seeing a doctor and I've seen, um, and now I was referred to a, a therapist and uh, she said to me that what was, before all this happened, what did you enjoy doing? I said, I just like art, always have done. And she said, well, maybe enroll in a college. So I enrolled in college and then my tutors from there pushed me and seen something in me. And then, so I finished, by the time I'd done that and then I finished year in, university because I wanted to take it all the way as far as I could. And that's what introduced me into murals as such, just when I was in uni. Um, I was doing work large scale um, of just scenes around Bristol, Bristol where I live, the market scenes and things like that. So they were very, again, um, expressionistic, I would say, as, uh, as well as impressionist. So I sit sometimes on the border. <laughs> so you were, you were in the pub at this stage when you, were, you got burnt out. Yeah, yeah. All I, I had nervous yeah. exhaustion. Um, and then from there, um, obviously, I went to college and university. Um, but I still like the pub side of things. But it's just the amount of work that I went in. Uh, this is when uh, smoking bans came in and the pub trade was actually starting to really hit a real time low, um, which they are still suffering now. But it's, I think now it's come to a point of just changing the face. It's, you know, I'm used to the drinking holes. And um, from there, I went so obviously into university, um, sucked up as much knowledge as I could. I had my own views. I discovered that I had certain views, a voice in art, maybe. Um, I can see um, how people can relate to things. And I, it taught me how to think a little bit differently, um, not to be too involved. So when I left um, the university, I went pretty much after about a year after you, I went back into the licensing trade again to help out in a social club, um, originally as an assistant manager, which I, I thought was great because I could take a little bit of a step back. I didn't have to be full force. And then listening to conversations and um, how we actually relate. I started not just listening, but just looking a little bit at the whole world a little bit different after everything. And so my work is based on then connections we all have, but we don't see. So, like that. okay. So, so you're saying that, 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 that we have a way of impressioning or um, I know you actually use colour to express it because I saw that you had the blue and the green, the yellow and the purple people in yeah. one of your expressions of the room of colourful people. It was like a crowd. But how do you, how then, how does that interpret for you? So how do you connect that? So 
do you think um color to me it um creates emotion um full stop i mean so if you're say if you're in a room and if you're in that black room or in, or in your head space and you're in that dark space you picture dark colors so that would pronounce that if you're feeling a little bit low it might be a green or more if you're feeling um depression as a circular so i've given these feelings a certain color um but also making sure they, they merge it's uh, they connect still with each other so it, it's more of that where like uh, one of my pieces i think i called um <laughs> remember um uh, bearing souls to all that one was um developed on a stage where Every time we all know that if we look around, one in four people suffer with depression. Mm. It is a fact. Absolutely. So we 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 seem to always be shocked. I take comfort in that. And I think others should take comfort in that. I said I've had my say like I might have a low time, but hey, my the person is a complete stranger could have been in the same situation you were. And I think that, um, I think a lot of people, I, I talk to an awful lot of people who, um, we talk we talk about mental health, but actually it's an emotion, like you said, they're in a, like perhaps a, a darker space, a darker time, they're in a place where they're more anxious, um, perhaps they're more melancholy for whatever reason, um, yeah. and not always up and yay, you know, and all this sort yeah. of thing. Um, so you're, you're talking about that sort of connection, which I rather like. So you're representing emotion. So when we see this picture that I was looking at, you had a, a, the one was bearing your soul. You had a beautiful use of color with people in the room. So tell me a bit more about that picture itself. Now, if you look at this closely, um, this was down to um, a center around a group of people that are together originally. They're all together in their color states. And if you look around the actual cafe itself, there's people sat in there to have comfort. So it's down to the. This is what I experienced when I was in the, the um, licensing trade. Um, you will get people that go to a bar to have company. They live on their own. They go to a social place to have company. So that's so. So far, we've got this wonderful connection. And as as a, a pub, um, publican and pub, pub landlord, you knew about how people were interacted, in which you've put in your pictures with the expressions of these emotions and how they represented in their, either where they're isolated or in a low mood or go and yeah. connect with people. I love that. Okay. Yeah. I'm really, I'm liking that. I like that. Yeah. Series. I go to coffee shops, for instance, for <laughs> sometimes uh, not just to meet with friends, but I'll go in there just to, to have a, have a think and a, and a, and a pause moment and where you're going to go forward. It's not just um, a coffee. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a thought process that you plug yourself in basically i mean i go through certain phases you know, you know it could be just a simple walk but in the city where everything's busy it's that one moment sometimes you get you want to be in the busy bit but not too much <laughs> so it's that you know you still want that connection with people if you live alone i mean i lived alone uh, when i lived in london after leaving, leaving the army that was um uh, a strange time and hence why um, with the depression and everything I don't drink anymore um, I say anymore I don't I don't I drink but as I say it's very very rare I do so I can go six months without one and then go oh I've had a cheap night <laughs> so it's yeah, so but with that I think it because it's the, the the downward spiral I don't want to ever go down on so I just stick with coffee and that's why but I can see why people do that. Um, uh, being in the army as well, where um, I suppose I've drawn influences from there with uh, emotion, emotions. Um, I've had um, certain things uh, in my life that's happened. Uh, not always on a battlefield, because uh, touch wood, never been in a, never been um, posted away. I was only in there three and a half years. Um, but during this is what. Because I was away from home, I come from a small town, um, and I used the army to push my bank, push my um, self, so I could leave home at, you know, at eighteen. I had financial support in the nineties, you know, with the uh, with the recession we had on at that time then, so I had financial support there. 
it was a roof over my head and I get to travel the world. So it was a case of, it was a no brainer. <laughs> and it was just like, yeah, I go and do that. Cause I didn't know what I wanted to do when I left school. Similar thing happened to me after I left uni. Um, because I, sometimes it takes a little while to let it sink in where I want, where I want to go. Um, when I finished university, I had a 10 year gap. Um, I just didn't, i have done bits and pieces back to where I was at the beginning. I had another dark spell, seeing the doc, docs would just pick it up again. And I just went, okay, um, let's see where this goes now. I've got everything, I've got the tools, I've got the education going. I mean, this is, so I think that's a blessing. I needed to reflect. I needed to um, draw on my inspirations where I wanted to, to go with it. Um, materials as well, which I want to use, of researching and uh, networking obviously is very, very key. I wanted to make sure if I'm going to put work out there, I wanted to make sure it was um, the best I could actually do, um, the best uh, uh, from stretchers to sourcing uh, people that prints off my um, art certificates and things like that. So I wanted to make sure if I'm going to, someone's going to pay for my work they don't just get my work they get the, the whole experience as well you know it makes it a little i got you know i got this from such as such, what comes with it it's it's not a sales thing it's just a, a gift or a thank you now yeah i like that so you're you're very kinesthetic because you're about the whole experience kinesthetic means you're touchy feely yeah and you're quite like that and that's quite cool if you don't mind me saying and a broke that's quite nice because some of the, the artists i come across that um, a bloke, so they're quite, they are quite in touch with these these expressions and actually get lost doing other things and re don't realise that that's inside them until perhaps later on when they start expressing it. I can see your workmanship's excellent. I mean, I was looking at that in terms of you you have you offer frames and you do all these different these different things. I also liked the one that caught my eye originally um, was the one where you've got everybody because to do with the pandemic, to do with the lockdown, where you've got them all lined up and uh, that is fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, I the like front that. Line. NHS front line. Yeah. yeah. Where do you I get that? I mean... Good feedback on it. Yeah. That, <laughs> that came to me at three o'clock in the morning. Um, I had the sketchbook by the side of my bed and I just woke up um, as it was during lockdown I went I got it I got it it's uh, just one of them things that um, I dreamt it it was well you know you think you know, at the time we were I think only about three weeks four weeks into the panda uh, into the uh, in the UK on it um, so it was very raw real everything's just called surreal and people were noticing it and I thought well my niece um, is a NHS nurse as well so I thought well this is their war. You know, my friends have been um, to war. So where's their front line? What are they fighting? What are they actually, you know, there is no front line as they call it. So I thought, I'm going to put that as an image that you can't photograph or it's just, you know, it's just something that, it's like Picasso's, um, that's why I also is for Picasso. So he done one for after the uh, the first world war. I think it was. Um, I can't remember the name. I should do. Not you, me. <laughs> um, I have to research that now because it's going to bug me. But where he shows the horror, that's the horror. They say, but we don't see the horror. They do, and that's that's you know because we're we're isolated away from that as well. But they're not. It's just. And it's on our own soil. It's a very, very surreal battle, a pandemic, I think. I so, think so, yeah. I yeah. like the way you interpret that, interpreted that. And uh, I like the way you did that, because everybody's gone for very cliche concepts of this, of this uh, as you said, this pe peculiarity of being isolated, this peculiarity yeah. of our normal lives being almost cut short and the bomb is all yeah. bit. And then, then you interpreting these people on the front line and then their, their front face. I like that. Yes. Um, it's brilliant. I mean, some of your work is brilliant, actually, because it's, it's more brilliant than I think you're probably um, selling. You're not selling the, the brilliance of your work. Because actually, when I thought about you and I looked at you more, I thought, oh, wow, if we really got behind some of this, 
you know, we had a bit more of an idea who Tim Burgess is with his work, I think we've really sort of get in more involved again. And I think when you do, um, you interview people, you're, you're able to allow them to say, hey, this is what I was thinking, this is what I did. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're getting, because, you know, from you, because you created it, I'm, I'm feeling it, it's just very nice, I like that. So, okay. So now these emotions are interpreted onto, onto canvas, which is, is really cool. And from canvas, some uh, 300 GSM, 200 uh, GSM paper, it depends on the material I'm using. Okay. But yeah, it's you're quite, you're quite partic- Now you're quite particular about your, um, what you like to use. So what sort of things do you like to use? I mean, obviously you said about the paper, you said about the canvas and, and things. Tell me a little bit more. Anna, uh, what's I love working with um, black ink and, uh, and uh, most recently, I'm going into say uh, brown ink as well, just uh, the monotones of it. Um, I've always been a lover of acrylic. Um, I use, I go back to traditional as well. I still use pencil. I use color pencil, um, wax-based color pencil because um, if I'm using ink again, it uh, it reacts it better. Um, yeah, that's what I'm particularly. I'm not. I rather save. So I don't work off a normal easel. I build my I built my own just out of a sheet of MDF and a couple of bolts and a shell. I rest all my canvases on that and I work off boards um, if I've not stretched them. Sometimes I'll pre-stretch if they're a certain size. But um, sometimes I could be working on something and it would be off centre if I worked on actual canvas. So I, I tend not to stretch them until it's actually built. And then you get it nice wrapped as well. So work off boards. Um, so, so this, I've done engraving. I've worked with airbrushing. I'm a terrible airbrusher, so I don't ever do that. I, I tried it. <laughs> I appreciate what they do now, so that's, that's one thing. Um, yeah, so it's more the learning of it as well. I, I find it's quite fun. Um, and then... So as I said, even though I finished university and I learned how to use all these materials they gave me, I've come out and then I was wanted to carry on learning. So technically I was still doing stuff I was doing in uni. It was only the last three years I just went, no, this is the materials I'm really happy to use now. So I use makeup sponges, for instance, that's another thing, um, for blending. Um, oh, I'm just looking around my studio now. I just, yeah, anything that comes to hand uh, a lot of the time. Do you have favourite um, uh, products like, you know, people have uh, favourite brands of things they use or do you tend to be more diverse with what you use? Um, I've gone into, it all depends on the colour, I think. So if I was to use um, a certain paint, I'm not so much, I'm brand, I'm, I'm brand aware but I'm also, with the uni, um, which has helped, you know what to look for level of pigment, for instance, in a piece. So what's colour fast? Are you worried about the colour fast? So like black, for instance, black's black. It all depends on uh, how opaque that black is. That, that's it. It's, and if, and that's how I say it. I mean, when they say, oh, I'm using this ivory black to a Mars black. No, it's just black. It's just if you if you add a little bit of um, gloss medium to that, it will go to a deeper black. Yes, it will be clear, but you've got to build them layers up. So, mm. but when it comes to like golds and things like that, when you, that that's when you've got to pay the money. I think uh, you don't get, but you're not going to be using a lot of it uh, in, in one area. So that's where I pay them pay the money for. So yeah, I not I'm. Sinclair is one of my favourite brands, I would say. Yeah, definitely, and, and probably A2. But, yeah, that, they're, they're my two favourite. And I see a lot of people using, which I do in, like, in for my murals, I use um, System 3. It, it's, it's absolutely great uh, for a mural, especially inside a house where if you're doing a nursery, they're like, grow that nursery, they're going to paint over it, they're not going to keep it, but it's not, you don't need art. You just need that vibrancy which System 3 gives us. So you don't need the, the storage long life. Uh, you know, varnish, varnishing helps as well. That gives you the depth. I, I love, I've got to, into recently, which is find some recent works, I've gotten to um, the iridescent medium. I'm starting to really have fun with that at the moment. 
um, especially with the, the the rainbows and that I've recently worked with and, and that. So yeah, that's getting quite uh, used quite a lot. <laughs> so. oh, I like that. That's very nice. Now you're talking about those murals that I've seen. They are rather nice because they that I mean they they children. I like the one the sea. I saw the sea world one with the octopus and yeah. the. That was really nice, and I like the color tones, and and it's all it's got a really good three D feeling to it, which is fantastic. Now I assume people commission you for those, or you get to get to work on on that sort of. Um, they they look more like children's ones, but they might not. But what sort of things do you do with that? Well, how 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 did you get into that? Because I love things like that. As when I was younger, I used to do a lot a lot of work with that because that was. I, well, I promised my children that I would do their room. And, that, and, and I started off with a small space because they were getting their rooms decorated. And I'd done a unicorn for my little one and, and, and rainbow and things like that. And uh, my wife said, uh, you should put that on Facebook. And I went, ah, I don't know. So I didn't know how far I would go. That's, that's the honest truth of it. So I put it on Facebook. Um, I then done my eldest child because my youngest had one, my eldest one I had one. And that's where the dragon came from. And then, yeah, I, I basically know like the, the sea one that you see, um, that was commissioned straight off the bat within a week. It took me three and a half days with design. And uh, the lovely lady um, gave me a wall basically to really push myself and see how far I could go with it. And I wanted to do a good job. I really love doing seascapes anyway, but uh, it's... It's something I, it gives me the room. My, my, my studio is quite small. So if I want to, if I, you know, it gives me the freedom to work on something big. Yes, to a criteria of what they want. Um, but they, they usually give me a little, if they like my work, they, they usually give me a little bit of virus freedom. They just, she wanted fish. And so I gave her a, and the sea scene okay. for her. <laughs> so, so you've gone from army's art. I'm loving this. Uh, this is very, very cool. Um, uh, now, so that, I like those, and of course, a lot of people do. And you certainly want expression and colour on a wall, particularly in a child room, generally speaking. So you, I mean, again, it's quite emotional because it's still very, it's very much a world that you've created for them, which I like. Um, so you're doing a lot of different things. You sort of got, you've you've got this sort of, as you said, this impressionist, expressionist quality to your work which we can see behind you you've got these murals that you do which are incredibly nice and they're almost um as i said they're like a world of their own and you know we're, we're very much working on these on this end of, of what i call the touchy-feely kinesthetic emotional end of things um whatever you're doing with it which is really nice now for you to being um finding yourself through um I, are we going to call it me mental health, although I'm not especially yeah. on the word. You found yourself through really through um, a darker space, a depression, which a lot of artists and artisans literally do, and then they find that there's something more behind that. And you've also used your life experiences, so you've used a lot of your time well, with other people. Yeah, um, that's where the public, I think, because where you speak to certain ex army as well as myself and compensate and you find their relations um you find it, it's a weird uh, i still uh, you you i think it's i say you i think uh, overall maybe my dad also taught me a few things but i see the world on the back foot a little bit um i don't see um so, so for instance uh a heroin user I would not see them as a heroin user, first of all. I think they have a problem with heroin, for instance, but something got them on there. He wasn't on it all the time. We're all born equal. We're all born the same way. It's what choices we make in our life depend on that, and that reflects on our mental health as well. So it's having that, you know, for someone coming off it, that you know, to me is an incredible amount of strength um, to to be able to do that. For instance, I'm using this as an example, by the way. You know, so right, it's a good example. So let's go with example because I'm with behind you on this. Yeah. I think that art therapy, which is where we've been going with your stuff, your point of view, which is really cool, is is very pertinent. But I also think you're right. I think that if somebody can get to the point of getting coming off alcohol, coming off drugs, whatever they might be. Yeah. 
they're a heavy user, they found the strength. We can portray that in something, that connection of one you yeah. know, these spaces through, if you like, art communication. Yeah. Um, I think that we've got a, a marvellous way of interpreting that for people. Because that's what art's supposed to be about, human connection, that the... the um, that 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 space if you like yeah. which is what you're saying i think that's what's scary i mean i i look at instagram and um a lot obviously it's our inspiration and i follow a fair few artists i i'm trying on maybe doing a, a, a bit, another video on this um at a later date because i think it's very prominent you always see the portraits which is great commission work which is great so like you say, very commercial artwork. And it's scary to see that there's only a handful now that actually portray life. Um, to, sit, you know, to see the world in a, in a different space. Abstract will always sell. That's, that's, what, that's a given, I'm afraid. You know, it's, it's, it's interior design. Um, I get it, I like it, some of it. And then you know, I look at um, color composition. Um, through abstract, so I do like that. Um, but with you know, a good abstract artist has has that ability. I'm afraid. Um, but what I do scare the ones are where I follow certain ones, which is uh, art with meaning and, and and thought behind it, are very dark. They're they're portraying um, depression to be a very dark thing all the time, and it's like, whoa, hang on a minute, let's say can't we just like yeah, I've got depression. And, you know, it's that, that attitude where it needs to change, where uh, we're all in the same gang. Do you know what I mean? It just yes, needs I to do be... actually. Yeah, I do, actually. I get that. It, and that is coming out in your paintings and your message. Um, you know, unless you're really, you know, not paying attention to your work. Actually, when I was reading it, it, did, it was saying that um, about that space. And you're quite right. A lot of people tend to be very cliched in their depiction of yeah. whatever they think something is. Um, Everybody wants to be the Francis Bacon. I'm sorry, but it's done very well. And now do something different. You know, grow with it. Go with it. You know, you know it's a repeatingness. Yeah, it's very fine. I'm finding a lot of art that's very repeated. Um, I don't want to be big headed about my work, but I think you know, a lot of the great artists never became great artists until they're nearly on their way out just because they finally cracked what they really wanted to do i hit my 40s um yes midlife crisis crept in but a lot, a lot of people say me i've done a lot in 20 years <laughs> of adulthood um to to portray this i think i've lived very hard very fast i'm a workaholic I can't help that but if I'm passionate about something, I'll just I just go and do it. But it if something annoys me, I just walk away from it. Um, I'm not very vocal in in that. But I'll go. Maybe I could use that someday. You know, it just goes into the the the, the psyche, and then something. I mean, I've got something I'm working on at the moment, where um, in the sketchbook, where I'm looking at a new series of. Uh, you know where we go and go to visit a place and it dawns with that memory. I want to portray um, that uh, colour within that memory. So you would be your typical landscape. It would be very much um, an emotional feel to that landscape more than just your standard landscape. So just little things where things that I been to so there's certain things like uh, Dirtle Door and um, Dorset is very close to me um, not to me you know, but yeah but to the heart um, Coldicott Castle is another one that's very close to my heart so you know there's, there's there's little things where I've had really good fond memories of my travels around the UK and, and the pub trades as well and um, relations and old friends and oh I really you know these little things where we've uh, it's that where we've had a friend and we've lived in an area, a really close friend, and then you lose contact with that friend because of our, our lives, um, break that apart and uh, for some reason. But then you always remember, you know, that, that bond you had then. So I'm looking at 
bonds with places. I like that. Yeah, I like things like that because I've seen some artists depict the most incredibly interesting colour tonal ranges and ideas within a, a landscape that they've, they're have they very fond of, very aware of, or had some connection to. Um, you're not trying to cliche people with um, different head spaces or emotional spaces into something. You're trying to give them a better identity, um, perhaps a... Um, yeah, not a label actually, just just an expression. Just being human. Yeah, just being human. human. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Because I've I've banged uh, on and too. celebrating their differences, I think, rather than you know, yeah. the, the 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 state that this pigeonhole in this, which upsets me is that it's always downward looking and, and I just went, Well <laughs> I'm going bold. <laughs> you know, it's just don't matter, it doesn't matter. It's it's we're not here on this on this planet for long, um, and I think why go through life with this bitter, worrying all the time, uh, um, bitterness about things, uh, and just uh, cliche. I'm not a religious man, no, by the way, but um, that's because I don't believe in, in, in earthly religions. I just don't. Agree with that, but I do believe we're here for a reason, and we got to live our lives how we're the best we can. Sometimes life gives us a hard deal, but it's how we go forward. It's there's no point dwelling on the past, and I, I it took me a long time to learn that myself, and try and celebrate the fact and go, yeah, I'm for a bad divorce, or you know, I mean, it's just that. Because you, you've got workshops where you allow people to express themselves. So I'm, I'm guessing you're taking your these ideas because say somebody has just gone through a divorce or um, mm. or they're a kid going through something um, as kids do, and you're just talking about the human expression because everybody has ups and downs, highs and lows, this and that. I mean, um, to be human is to have all of that and some, and people yeah. don't talk about it much anymore anyway. But I think and people can't because if they do, they're sort of um, they're bullied or cyber bullied or some crazy crap yeah. like that. And so people don't don't come forward. So having a space to perhaps create in is is a fantastic idea. I mean, you well, are you are your workshops based around that idea, or, or my my workshops um, for for children, um, the ones I usually do for the teenagers. I know how hard it is for them, so I usually do them for free for the um, guides or cubs and things like that. Um, just to uh, it's just magic. Uh, it's it's funny. I work. I done a one uh, before COVID, and um, it was a case of these groups of kids where they always have their own clique uh, and their own little group of friends. I said, "Well, we're going to mix things up and, and change that." So we blew it all out the water. That gave the shy kids a chance to shine just by doing that. So they're not. So that and then they make friends and they become a part of a of a stronger unity between them so it was only collaging but they got to laugh and appreciate and the collages had to swap around each other so you, you know they have a foot and the next minute within five minutes they've got a head to do so and they're working on top of each other's work That's so it's brilliant. all mixed in together and then they show off their work but there's not there's a, it's a, it's a it's a unique team so it's not a bunch of friends doing it or anything like that it's a unique team and they just come back with fits and giggles. The, even the shy kids came out. The artistic kids, kids got to shine. Um, the ones that just thought it was just fun was just, that's the whole point. You know, they were saying, the, the leaders were saying, oh, it's a real mess. Though. I went, but I was your kids. Uh, the kids had, had as much fun as this, the, the laughing. The, you know, I mean, it was just a real buzz. And um, yeah, that's what got me hooked, really. <laughs> It allows synergy, doesn't it? Different creative ideas come together when people work together as well. Because like yeah. the shy kids get with, you know, some of the kids that they wouldn't necessarily get around and, fight, and the artistic kids get around other people and the more really bullshy ones, they get around somebody else and do something. Yeah. It's quite a nice expression. I like that. I mean, it's, it's quite a good one because if you've got someone that's a bossy kid, because you always get them and um, they've worked on it and you've got this shy kid, it's about to ruin your work. <laughs> so it's give, it is payback, you wait till you get out of mind. You know, it's that kind of yeah. fun amount about it. And then they put it back together and they created something magic and they yeah. just think, oh wow, we've done that. And it's like, you know, that's what they loved about it. 
and I love it. Just, it's nice and cheap for the for the club as well. I mean, it cost them a roll of paper, and we were and that was it. So we bring in some magazines, and some glue. So <laughs> you're talking about a time when people did more of that sort of thing, because people did back in a day have less and do more with stuff and that was yeah. a normal thing but i'm looking at your paintings in the background and i want to go back to those now do you have a favorite picture that people tend to go for or a painting on an image that they like of yours or do you find that they have a broader taste um well this one at the moment i'm working on this one mm -hmm. still and this one um i've had feedback recently but i painted it last year so Strange that Black Lives Matter came into it. Um, I thought I just put a post up on Twitter. I said I painted this a year ago, and so it's weird how things come more relevant and go in circle. So, yes, this, I'd say this one was one of my favorites, but the most recent one, um, I would say is probably the largest one I've done. Uh, recently, which is called uh, oh, because I can't remember his name now. Uh, Te um, Tears of Hope, I called that one, and that's down to uh, it's quite deep, it's quite a deep piece. So, I, mean, I was looking at the um, movement of uh, Black Lives Matter, and I don't want to steal their voice at all i want you know I, i'm not like that at all so i don't really go into the preaching or siding or anything uh, and that that's the, for them to do so mine was more of a recording of it so for for generations this is for, for generations and generations they've been fighting fighting for their rights I think by now, come on, it should have been done. Why, why is it still, what, it should be done and dusted. It's just silly. It's just, not silly on their ass, by the way. It's just, it's just this mentality that some people still have over a, a skin colour. It's just crazy. So I wanted to portray this, this hope, as, as we all do, as rainbows. And I've been thinking about it, I'm thinking about it, and i just come up with this guy that's just, that's like, would it be magic if it just did go? What would it feel like? So I've pictured the man radiating himself in the floods of the tears of his ancestors. That's the that's the best way I could interpret it in my head. I think it's just, and then I just if people like it, great. But that's my feeling on it. Most recently, I've removed um, painting detail faces. Um, because I've given them my identity then, and I don't want that identity. So uh, most recently, I've I've also removed. I've just given them the shadow lines, but there is no eye colour or lips or shaped lips or um, things like that. So it's just you will see that the closer you get to it, you 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 pick it up. Um, wearing glasses, I was like as well doing it, but. Yeah, it, it, and that is where I said where I was getting fun with the iridescence, and that's how I manipulate the light uh, around that. So it's quite. Oh, I like that. I like that idea of your people as well. I noticed that they had no, even on your imagery that I was looking at, the, the people were nobody but somebody but everybody in a good way, in a way that we all, there was aspects of us within even the, the pictures I've been looking at. And this one in the back, can you lift it up a little bit so we can see it a little bit more? Yeah, that will be cool, yeah. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. Now what does this have? Oh, very nice. There we are. Oh, it's, it's, taking, it's taking over. Tell me a little bit more about that picture because I love it. It's absolutely fabulous. I like I like the use of colour, um, everything about it. This is quite a personal one. Um, but my my nephew died of suicide um, not so long ago and it was down to the fact that there was a lot of deaths going on I was hearing a friend of mine committed suicide with but we all stem his bereavement over his mum dying of suicide so it was on them lines originally and I'm lucky I feel that my my dad died 11 years ago his teachings still stay with me so and then I think it was the case of uh, a news report I read or something like that, where um, 
it, it was a stereo cliche of, of a young guy, probably ended up in gangs. Nobody knows his backstory. Nobody knows why he's ended up that way. Sometimes these kids are orphaned or they've got a loss of something and then their dad's working all the hours under the sun trying to support. So we are left on their own and they're trying to find a group of friends that end up being a gang sometimes. So there's lots of stories that can go on into that. The idea behind this one, this troubled teen um, look on the face was um, depicted of where do I go from here? And then his mother trying to guide him. So it's that the, the, the past teachings. So that's where <laughs> the thoughts, so sort of crazy imagination of my, that's where that came from really. Um, so, and I was thinking, well, with, with the teachings that my friend, my friend who died not so long ago and you know, what she left behind, she, 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 he went completely off the rails. Um, when because she died, so she, you know, he, she committed suicide, and he was still so young. So he went from one drug to another, to another, to another, to another, tried to get back on his feet, and then gone. So it was like he burnt out as well. So it's that it's trying to try to remember them teachings and and and, and you know that that specific point where someone makes a choice, whatever they're going to way they go are they going to remember them teachings that they've been given or are they going to just flip out it's very point you know, to, to that. I love that. Do you call like that could be called a choice I don't know what it's called but I like that that's a beautiful picture and it does give you that feeling that somebody's trying to care or bring somebody forward mm. or out of some space um it does give you that impression and it does come across that way. You know, your work is beautiful and really makes you think about it. I mean, if that's going to be on your wall, you're going to have a lot of space and head space time and emotional space time to think about those pink paintings, which is what it, it should be. It should be about, you know, I mean, when we buy art or we think about art, we should be thinking more than that's what we hope to do. I mean, that's why we go and that's even really walk around an art gallery, isn't it? You, know, you go around looking because you want to see what, what these things bring you know bring out in you yeah um i think the big message here is about is actually about art as a therapy as a usage as a, an expression as a creative outlet because your work maximizes emotion it, it says hey this is this is this this is this going to be emotional so thank you tim it's been a brilliant interview today i really enjoyed the emotional content of your work um i've really enjoyed the connection to the human spirit here where whether it's a good or bad emotion is not actually what we're looking at we're looking at just the human condition of our ups and downs our low moods our, our uh, whether we feel melancholy in one hour or perhaps we're happy in another the the the, the roller coaster of emotions is interpreted in the work so it's been a pleasure speaking to you and i look forward to working with you some more for more tips and ideas on painting, please subscribe below to the Simply Inspired channel.